Welcome to this new video. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to deploy a Spring Boot application to a local Kubernetes cluster. To install a local Kubernetes cluster on your machine, you can use Docker for Windows or Docker for Mac. And within the Preferences section of Docker for Windows, there is a Kubernetes tab. And within here, you can enable the checkbox to create a local Kubernetes cluster and then click apply and restart. If you do this for the first time, this may take some seconds as in the background um, some images has to have to be downloaded. But once everything is up and running, you will see it with the green dot here that both Docker and Kubernetes is running. We can actually uh, double check this using the kubectl uh, CLI and check the cluster info. And if everything is up and running, you should see the following green output that your Kubernetes master, master is running locally. And also kubeDNS is available at, at this address. That's everything you need for now. And to actually demonstrate it, I've created a sample Spring Boot application. It's um, a Spring Boot application containing just the Spring Boot starter web and the Spring Boot starter actuator. The actuator actually isn't mandatory, but it's uh, nice to have as with the actuator, we'll get a, a health endpoint, which we can later on use um, for Kubernetes to ensure that our application is up and running. So that's everything for the application. It's a rather small one. Let's create a simple endpoint to later on see that our application actually is up and running and returns data. Therefore, I will create a simple REST controller mapped to API slash messages. And this one has just one simple get endpoint, which returns a list of string. Let's do this. Import it. And as we're using Java 11, we can use list of and just return some strings. So that's everything. Next, as we are going to deploy it to our Kubernetes cluster and use Docker as the container solution, we have to provide a Docker image for our application. For this, um, we need a, a Docker file in our repository. And as we are using uh, Java 11, I've chosen the OpenJDK 11 base image and um, just copied in our jar file, which will be created after we execute Maven package. And um, while copying it, I will it's renamed it to app.jar and the final uh, command just executes java-jar uh, with app.jar to start the application. Next, um, we need a little bit more um, declaration for Kubernetes to actually describe how Kubernetes should deploy our application. Therefore, we first need a so-called deployment. Um, and within the deployment, we specify how many replicas of our application should be running in parallel. So here I'm saying, um, please run two pods in parallel to have at least some failover if one pod dies. Next, um, we have to tell Kubernetes um, where it can find or how it should construct our, our containers. And within the spec section, here we can define the containers. For now, it's enough to just run uh, one container in our pod. And here I'm now specifying the um, image name of our Spring Boot application. So you will see here there's a prefix of a, a container registry. So later on, we will need a local con uh, Docker registry to push our images to and uh, for Kubernetes to be able to pull it from there. So here we specify the name of the image. Then as we use the defaults, we will expose the default Tomcat port 8080. And the next two sections are important for Kubernetes to ensure that our application is healthy. So there are two probes that uh, Kubernetes will take the first one is the readiness probe. So once uh, the application is uh, started, it will check for this endpoint at this port. And if this returns 200, uh, Kubernetes uh, knows the application is up and running. 
and can actually um, serve traffic to this pod. The next probe is a liveness probe. This will be executed periodically while the application is running for Kubernetes to ensure that the application is still alive and is still able to, to serve uh, data and to get traffic. And here I'm using the same endpoint from Actuator Health. You could also provide your own uh, health uh, endpoints and divide it by readiness and liveness probe, but for now this is, is enough. So with this setup, we would now have two pods running in Kubernetes, but we wouldn't be able to access it from outside. And to access it from outside, we need a so-called service. And the most simplest service as our application is just running on one single node locally is the node port. With this node port, we will expose our internal Spring Boot port 8080 to the node port uh, 31000. So when we later on access this port, uh, of our Kubernetes cluster of this node, um, the traffic will be routed to our Spring Boot application and we are able to get data from our uh, REST controller. That's everything for the setup. We now have to first um, build our application with Maven Clean Package. So once this was built, we now should see our jar file in the target folder, which we need for our Docker image. We can now build the Docker image with docker build minus T for the name. Let's call it Spring Boot App. So this now built the Docker image we need. Next, we have to start a local container registry. In the readme, I've provided the command for this. So there is a, an official registry image available called registry. And we can just run this locally and expose the port 5000 to our local machine. Once this container registry is up and running locally, so if you execute Docker PS, you should see that the container registry is running. You can now tag our Spring Boot image with the name of the registry. We need this, otherwise we won't be able to push it to this local registry. So the name is just localhost 5, uh, port 5000. If you would push this to a container registry, for example, in, in the Google Cloud or in Azure, you would have to adjust this name uh, to be able to push it. So we tag this now, and now we can push. So this will now push our local image to our local container registry. This is required as Kubernetes requires a, a registry to pull the image from. If you execute this for the first time, it will, as there are no layers already available in the registry, it will take some seconds to push all layers to the registry, but subsequent uh, pushes uh, will be much faster. So as this is now available in the Docker registry, we can apply our deployment file. We specified here to Kubernetes. Therefore, execute kubectl apply hyphen f and specify the name of the file. And as we specified two types, um, one the deployment and the other one is the service to access it from outside. You should now see here in the output that Kubernetes will now or created now the deployment and the service. Let's first check the pods. So as we specified, we want a replica set of two. So we want two pods running in parallel each time. You should see here two pods running. We could also um, execute kubectl describe pod to see what actually happened. Let's copy this. And this will give you some output about the pod, but the most important information is here on on the bottom, so if something would break on your machine or is not working, you should see here the events which happened. So the first one is um, that we successfully pulled the image from the local registry, then we created a container, we started a container, and the first liveness probe here failed because the application was not yet uh, started properly. So uh, Kubernetes did a second retry and as 
kubectl get pods um, now specifies here we have um, two uh, running containers in this pod and now everything is healthy this warning output is just here that while starting everything the, the first um, access to this endpoints might fail but uh, after trying this uh, with a small delay uh, our application uh, successfully started and was able to to return 200 from this endpoint so now we can uh, try to access this endpoint using curl and as we are using just one node uh, this is mapped to our local host we can here execute first the health check so here is the port 31000 of the node we specified in our service so this returns also now here status up what we can now check for is for our messages endpoint uh, this endpoint also now returned here a array of strings hello from kubernetes so this is working properly and our application is now deployed uh, with two pods to our local Kubernetes cluster.